Hello students, this is Miss Lawson and I made this video for you guys because I'm having surgery on October 12th in Chapel Hill and that's a Friday. Um, they're operating on my throat so I don't know if I'll be able to talk on the following Monday when we have class. So I, I may, I'm making this video so that um, I can show you things in the Chapter 5 or Module 3 that might be helpful to get you um, get you the A in this particular assignment. So Chapter 5 is called Creating a Business Letter with a Letterhead and Table. So I'm just going to show you guys a few things that's in this chapter. Um, these videos, the, the software that I'm using, it will only allow you to do a 15, 15 minute video so I may have to stop and um, start over but in chapter 5 um, I'm going to demonstrate how to insert and format a shape change text wrapping um, add a border to a paragraph tab stops and then how to um, create a table. You look on page 218 in your textbook, you see an example of the finished product. This is a business letter and the business letter always has certain parts to it. This one has a letterhead that is not required of a business letter but it's um, it, it catches the uh, reader's attention then they'll know that the letter is from such and such a company or or from such and such an individual. So the letterhead makes it uh, it makes it draws the attention of the person that's going to read it. We're going to do this one from scratch using shapes and other features of Word. Now the things that are required in a business letter are the date line. If you notice the date line is about five inches over from the left margin. There's an inside of an address. This is who you're writing the letter to and their contact information. A salutation um, is a greeting and the word dear is, is usually a, a popular word to use, an appropriate word. Then you have your body or message. And in our case we have a table. We're going to create a table in this chapter. You don't have to use a table in a business letter, but if it, if it suits the information that you're um, conveying, then by all means do a table. The last, um, and then there's a bulleted list in this business letter too. So we get to the end, we're done with our business letter. There's a complimentary close, and um, sincerely is usually, <clears throat> is, is a very common closing in a business letter. And then you have the signature block, at the bottom, that is who the letter is from. And if you notice, there's a lot of space between sincerely and the person's name. And that is because back in the day when they used typewriters, um, they left that space was left for a person to sign their name. So we still use those rules now. Um, so we're going to begin creating our, creating our letterhead by inserting a shape. And I'm on page one, 221 in your textbook. So I'm going to demonstrate how to insert a shape. I'm going to click on Insert, go down to Shapes. And these are all the shapes that are available in Word. And we're going to choose a rectangle. Okay, now nothing happens. Nothing happens because I've got to draw the shape. So I'm in um, drawing mode right now. So if you notice, You'll get a plus, looks like a plus sign, but you drag it over and up to to make your shape. Now I'm going to try to make mine as close as I can to what's in the book, but if I don't, it's okay. I can um, readjust it and resize it. Now if you noticed, when I drew this shape, all of a sudden something popped up on the um, on the ribbon up there that wasn't there before. Um, there's a tab there now called Format, but if you notice, it's for the drawing tools. It's not for picture. So when you click on a picture, you have a Format tab, but it's for 
the picture. This format um, deals with um, the drawing tools, and if you look at what's up here, you see it, all the information has to do with um, shapes and um, that kind of thing. So we have our shape. Now we need to get it the right size, so it needs to be shape needs to be five point zero point five three. So I'm going to change it up here. Um, you can type it in or use your up and down arrows. The width needs to be five point seven. Now we're done. So mine was sort of close to where it was. So that's our shape. It's set. All right. Um, the next concept in the book on page 223 is talking about talking about floating versus inline objects. Okay, an object um, when you insert an object in a document, it's either an inline object or a floating object. An inline object is an object that's part part of a paragraph. When you did the um, when you added a surfing picture in the first chapter that was a an inline object. Um, floating objects are objects that can be positioned at a specific location in the document or you can actually layer it over text but you have more flexibility with, with these floating objects because you can position a floating object anywhere you want on the page and you've got features that will let you um, will let the text wrap around that floating object too. Um, so we're gonna we're going to begin working on our shape, and it, it is an object. The shape is an object. So we're gonna change its position first. So page two twenty three in the textbook, I'm looking for position it in the top center with square text wrapping options. So I've got my um, rectangle selected. We'll go to position. And then I get this result. So it's best just to hold your mouse pointer under these pictures. I'm looking for position in top center with square text wrapping. So this is top left. Let's go over to the next one. This is top center with square text wrapping. So let's select that. All right. Let me click back in. That was a mistake. Okay, so now we have um, changed its position and we have also worked with the text uh, wrapping. So um, when you, when you uh, insert an object in um, or shape in Word, the default text wrapping is in front of text, which means that the object will cover up any text behind it. Um, but there are ways to make the text fit on top of the shape. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to click on this little button over here. And I'm going to choose um, top and bottom option under text wrapping. And there it is right there. I click that. And then I close my box. And nothing happens, but you're going to see when we start um, adding things to the object how you can manipulate it. Now I'm going to skip some things about about shapes, you know, colors and that kind of thing. I just want to show you what I the highlights of what I thought might be important. But just to demonstrate um, how to put text on the shape, I'm going to add some text to it, and you can do that by um, make sure you're in your in your shape, right click, and the box that comes up allows you to add text. And it's kind of hard to see the cursor, but there's one right there. And I'm going to say Nash Community College and just leave it at that. So see, I was able to um, write on the, the text is in front of my object versus the text being behind it. But I had to change it to, to do that. Um, I'm going to skip some... Um, changing the theme and that kind of um, those kind of things and I'm going to go to page 228 inserting an online picture now that means the picture comes from either, either the web or you've got a photograph on your camera or something like that um, so to insert an, a picture I'm going to go to insert choose online 
and we're going to have to um, wait for it to load. And we're going to be looking. We want to find an apple. So I'm going to type apple there. Now your screen might look way different than mine, um, but you should have a line of search. And you get lots of apples. Now, we we don't you don't have to use apple to send a book. Um, in fact, I think on some computers at Nash Community, it's not even on there. But anyway, you can choose any apple that you want. So just choose one, um, click on it, and then click on the insert button. And there's my apple. And my apple is really too big, isn't it? Um, so I'm going to need to resize it. So I'm going to make sure that I am clicked in my picture, which I am. Notice I have my formatting tab um, highlighted, and this is these are picture tools, not drawing tools, but picture tools. Um, so I'm going <coughs> to kind of resize this graphic. So um, the t the the graphic is selected. I'm going to go here to. Um, size and I'm going to click this bottom arrow. This is it called advanced layout. Now this can get real, you can um, get real specific with your picture. So for height, I'm going to put 0 0.53. The width is 0 0.53. Oops. And the, let's see. The height, the scale height is, um, I think that's 8% or, or 8. Um, so I'm just going to type 8 here. Okay. And um, I'm going to tell it OK. And there is my picture of my apple. Now they're going to have you change the color of it make it transparent, put a border, and I'm going to skip all that. Now, we need to move this picture uh, to the end of our um, of our newsletter, oh, excuse me, letterhead. Uh, if I click on it, not going anywhere. So I've got to change the text wrapping of it. Um, it's an inline graphic now. That means it's it's with the paragraph. So I've got to um, change the layout of it. So I'm going to click on it, look under layout options, and I'm going to do in front of text. No, it's not that one. Front of text. Oops. Here we go. Now there, we chose that. Now we can move it wherever we want to. I think mine's too big. Somehow or another, my size is messed up. Um, but now you can move it anywhere you want to. And then you can copy and paste this apple on the end down here. Well, put it on the end, I should. There you go. Now, it, this apple, well, I need to resize it, but I'm just going to let it go because I just wanted to highlight some of the things in here. Um, so those are some points. Um, it's talking about inline objects um, and how they work. And um, then it's talking about floating objects and how they work and how you can manip manipulate it with using the text wrapping and the, the boxes. So um, I'm almost at 15 minutes. So I'm going to try to start um, from the beginning with this um, news with this letterhead. So I'm going to stop the video recording and pick up again where we are right now.